As we've reached video 21 in this series of Photoshop for amateur photographers, perhaps we can have a short break from editing techniques and talk briefly about interpolation. Down at the bottom center of the Adobe Camera Raw screen, we have a hyperlink. Let's click that. In the workflow options, you'll notice we've got a section called image sizing. Now, I've got the values here of the size of the images from my Canon R5 camera, rounding them up a little bit, 8,200 pixels by 5,500. Let me just cancel that for a moment. And we're going to make quite a severe crop here. So I'm going to pick up the crop and come in really close. Incidentally, this was shot with, I think, 2000 ISO. Let me unlock that so I can have a little bit more on the front, a little bit less on the back. But you can see we're making quite a severe crop here of the otter, and I'm going to hit the Enter key. If you look down at the hyperlink now, you can actually see the pixel value, the new pixel value, of around about 4,300 pixels, by 2800. But let's click that hyperlink and let's go to the little box in the image sizing and ticket because now it's going to open up at 8200 by 5500. Let's click OK to that and just to test what I'm saying here, I'm going to open this up into Photoshop. As soon as it opens, I'll go to my image menu, image size, and sure enough, there we can see 8,200 pixels by about 5,300 pixels. So the software here has put a number of pixels into the image. Now it seems to have lost a few pixels in the height, but generally speaking, we've got the same size image here that I would get from my Canon R5, despite the fact I've severely cropped the image. Is this a benefit to us? Now I've made two examples for us to compare. I've got the images both enlarged on screen to a similar size as I can get. And I want to take a look at the quality and the detail. So I wanted to look at very fine hairs around the head of the animal. At the moment, we're looking at the image that wasn't interpolated. So this lost quite a number of pixels, but the quality remains there. When I go to the interpolated version, I can't see any difference whatsoever. I'm going to go backwards and forwards here, but I really can't see any difference between the two. And yet they're two completely different sized images. Bear in mind while you're watching this, if you're watching on YouTube, then you're going to be seeing a slightly compressed video. So this is the non-interpolated and this is the interpolated. Incidentally, I did apply AI noise suppression to both of these examples, but why can't we see any difference? And if we can't, then is there a point to do this? Well, not being able to see a difference may be a very good sign. It could be that Adobe Camera Raw is doing such a great job maintaining the quality of the images that we can't see the difference. Perhaps if this image was less sharp, or the crop I made was greater, then perhaps we may see some difference. So the $64,000 question is, what's the point? Is it worth doing? Now I recall from a few years ago, an image library I belong to, which asked for all images submitted to be interpolated larger. In other words, interpolated upwards. Now they must have had a reason to ask for this. Maybe it's in case a large print was needed to be made, but as amateurs we're not likely to want this very often. 
Now we could make the argument perhaps as amateurs that if we do this it'll just give us larger files to save and affect our ability to store them. But that's not really a huge issue these days. Now I've had the image size box ticked for quite some time in my version of Adobe Camera Raw. And I actually forgot about it after a little while. But then I went back and opened up some old images from a Canon 5D, and this is one of those. Now the Canon 5D was around about 5,500 pixels by 3,700 pixels. And as you can see here, I've cropped it not quite as severe as the Otter, but we've cropped it nevertheless. So let me click to accept that, and I'm going to open this up into... Photoshop because I've got that little box ticked and it should be interpolated upwards. Let's have a look at what we have. Image, image size. So now I've got 8,200 pixels on the long side and 5464 on the height. That is in fact more or less exactly the same as the Canon R5. There's a few pixels missing. I think the previous was 8192, but we're hardly going to notice that. But maybe if I pick up my zoom tool here and we just zoom into the image a little bit, we can make a determination on what we think about the quality. It looks pretty good to me, and at the moment we're up to 300%. I'll hit Control 0 to reset it back. Now I quite like the standardization of size across all my cameras. That's the Canon 5D. I have images from a Canon 1DS Mark III, currently a Canon R5, but also I have a 20 megapixel drone. But I honestly can't articulate a real positive reason other than in case we want large prints. Now I have made a few large canvas prints in my time and this method has allowed me to retain 300 pixels per inch for those print purposes. If I'm going to do this I think I'd rather have Adobe Camera Raw increase my pixels because I have confidence in it rather than allow what pixels I may have had without the interpolation to be spread over a larger print. Given those two scenarios, I'm going to go for interpolation. If you have any thoughts that I've overlooked on this issue, please feel free to make a comment below or email me from my website. I do have a contact page and you'll find a link below.